Um, thank you very much for the presentation. You, We're going to move on to item number five, uh, health prevention strategies to address obesity, mental, uh, Manuel uh, Abuleta, Managing Director, Preventive Institute. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me here to share current evidence about effective strategies to prevent food and inactivity related illness. Just over 10 years ago, the Strategic Alliance for Healthy Food and Activity Environments was established to serve as California's policy network to prevent chronic diseases. In the past decade, we have learned a lot about what works to prevent diet and inactivity related illnesses. Most types of type 2 diabetes, cancers, heart disease, and um, hypertension are completely preventable. California has been an innovator in policies and neighborhood level changes to prevent food and activity related illnesses. We have done a lot to bring healthy food and safe physical activity within easier reach of Californians, seniors, infants, adults, and children. We very much appreciate that you have created this forum to shine a spotlight on effective strategies and to create a springboard for the further action that is needed now to prevent premature illness and debilitating and costly diseases. Since we began, our work has really been propelled by community heroes. Women like America Bracho showed us that there were no playgrounds for children in her Santa Ana to play in. Veva Eastless Hooker sparked a dialogue with us about access to fresh, clean water in her Central Valley where overconsumption of sugar-sweetened beverages is hurting children and families. And from his work in Chula Vista, Dana Richardson made clear to us that safety concerns were preventing children and parents from using local streets and neighborhood parks for safe physical activity. Their experiences and hundreds more like them grounded our work in policy, health equity, and environmental change. As a result, California became the first state in the nation by law to create standards for healthy school meals and healthy beverages. We passed policy to ensure that California hospitals would be baby friendly so that babies' first foods would be optimal for them and for mothers. We've also worked to increase access to safe places to play and be active throughout the state. And we are demonstrating that safety is an essential element of chronic disease prevention and overall community health. Thanks to institutions like the UC Berkeley Center for Weight and Health and Active Living Research in San Diego, we now have a mountain of evidence that the environment shapes health. That the places where we live, work, and play influence behaviors like what we eat and to what extent we get active in ways that are shaping the health outcomes that we currently see today. Still, the fact is that far too many California institutions are hindering healthy choices or promoting unhealthy behaviors. And this is not just bad for health, it is bad for our economy and it is bad for the environment. Too many California children lack basic access to physical education or physical activity in schools, after school, and daycare centers. All children face a barrage of marketing of unhealthy products, and African American and Latino children are even more relentlessly targeted by new, uh, foods that are nutritionally hollow. And families that want to buy healthy foods 
are confronted by cheap foods and beverages that may help them stretch their food dollar, but they are crowding out the foods and beverages that are the foundation for health. We can do better, not just for some, but for all. Through strategic investments like philanthrop by philanthropies like the California Endowment, healthcare institutions like Kaiser Permanente, and investments by the federal government through the Prevention and Public Health Fund, we now know more than ever about what works in communities from Fortuna to Fontana and from Willits to Watts. Prevention is the key, and every sector has a role. When school grounds open up, community residents get more activity. We now have evidence that shows us that programs like Women, Infants, and Children, also known as WIC, are even more lucrative than we at first recognized because they reach children and families before the children reach kindergarten when the foundational behaviors around eating and activity are set. And we are seeing that low-cost interventions that bring physical activity and physical education to schools, after school, and daycare are yielding positive results. We know that health care costs are hurting our economy and hurting families. And through a focus on prevention, we can increase the patient mix, reduce frequent flyers in the health care system, and do things that help people who are already sick to more effectively manage the conditions that they have and avoid comorbidities that make them sicker and cost society more. All of this can add up to very real savings, but we do it because it reduces suffering, because it saves lives, and because it is the right thing to do. Californians are asking for a real culture of health. According to field poll data just released today, the majority of California voters support government action to increase access to healthy beverages, to increase access and incentivize fresh fruits and vegetables, and to direct health care dollars to prevention programs that work, including those that promote physical activities. But these are things that the health care sector cannot do alone. One of the most exciting developments of the last 10 years has been the uptake of health-promoting strategies by so-called non-health sectors. Take, for example, the work of transportation advocates to promote safe routes to school and access to public transportation. These strategies increase activity levels but they are also vital to our statewide push to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The recent passage of the active transportation program here in California means that many more locales will have access to funds to build projects that promote multimodal programs and that support health. California is now poised to bring evidence-based strategies to scale. It's time for us to build on what works, and we are requesting you, the Senate Health Committee's leadership, in three key areas. First, we'd like to ask you to apply a health in all policies lens in your work and in decision making. We ask you to prioritize state spending in the most impacted communities and we would love to ask you to convene statewide listening sessions to hear directly from local and regional leaders about what is working in their regions. In the coming year, you will be confronted with legislation and a variety of budgetary matters will come before you. Some of them will have obvious health implications, like California food policy advocates propose policy to increase the amount of time children have to eat the now healthier school meals. But some of these matters will focus on other issues, things like housing and economic development that at first seem to have very little to do with health. Social determinants of health like economic inequality and racial justice influence health at a root level. We're asking that you use a health and all policies lens 
to analyze the policies and budgetary matters that come before you and fully include potential health impacts so that you can weigh the relative merits of the proposals that you see. There's already great work of this nature going on here in the Capitol. The Health and All Policies Task Force, as many of you know, is an 18-member agency that is working across sectors to find win-win solutions. This is a great model for effective government, governance and using, doing more with less. Excuse me. We would like to see their work supported and we would like to see their approach exported to the legislature. Finally, as much as it's true that we've learned a lot about what works and what is effective in the last decade, there is still a lot more that we have to learn. Community residents have pointed out problems but they're also limitless in their creativity and ability to articulate and name effective solutions. We ask that you embark on a series of listening sessions to hear from them, to hear from youth, mothers, fathers, about their hopes and dreams for making a healthier California. Your leadership and your presence will energize the dialogue that is already happening in our state about how we will become the healthiest nation state in the nation. The Strategic Alliance stands ready to work with you and support you in any of this work. And on behalf of uh, Prevention Institute, I thank you all for your continued engagement and your leadership and for including our perspective in your work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions from any of the members? Yeah. Senator Money. Thank you for your presentation and more importantly for the work um, that you're doing and that the Prevention Institute is doing. You referenced in your presentation the uh, targeted advertising to um, minority and at-risk communities. Uh, how do you uh, incorporate in your strategy offsetting what are obviously um, incredibly well-funded advertising campaigns that promote relentlessly uh, unhealthful foods and beverages? We need intervention at a number of levels. We know now that these industries will not voluntarily stop the marketing. Um, so we are working with partners at the federal government to work with, the, there's a marketing work group at the federal government that's working with the FTC to really stop um, these practices create guidelines and one of our partners at Berkeley Media Studies Group talks about now the internet as sort of the wild wild west of marketing and advertising to children because there are no regulations and so while we might have made some progress on you know morning cartoons for example now there is targeted specific and you know insidious marketing on the internet so we have to be creative. <laughs> we have to work at the federal level. We also, I think, need to look at whether there are some um, local strategies around zoning, for example, to talk about the abundance or um, and a certain threshold of appropriate levels of marketing that people get in communities so we can look at things like placement of billboards. So I think, you know, this is something also when we look at sponsorships, um, frequently what we've seen in our work because we work with both people working on food issues and activity issues that the food and beverage industries will happily support physical activity tracks, pro physical activity programs, etc. in exchange for the small privilege of having their uh, marquee, you know, their name on a marquee. So we are also working with community-based organizations and others who understandably want to accept these resources because they're really struggling to do this work at a community level to provide them with guidelines that they can think about ahead of time to decide when is it worth it to take the resource. And this is the kind of thing that advocates in tobacco prevention and alcohol prevention really thought about as well. Do we do sponsorships for our concerts? Is it really worth it to have the whole thing put on by, you know, Anheuser-Busch or whatever. And those are the things that I think are part of a broad cultural shift and that we know that sort of both governmental and community-based advocacy interventions are needed at a number of um, different uh, levels of intervention. Thank you. And then related to that, it seems like one of the connected to that, a challenge, some of the unhealthful products um, have 
found high profile athletes, entertainers, singers to promote their products. Um, any efforts by the Alliance to find champions who are also looked up to by young people um, to promote more healthful alternatives? Yes, I, there are some efforts, and also um, I mentioned the endowment. They've worked with folks like the San Diego Padres to do things like embed exercise activity breaks in games. So I think there are a number of places, and clearly, um, you know, the w capital capacity that our field has to do that work is really less. And so to be able to, you know, you know, do the sponsorships and stuff is, is really less than we can, which is why we really rely on the leadership of government and policy to do the kinds of things that, you know, the, that, that, we, that we need to protect our children, to protect families, to conserve and preserve our natural resources and so on. So I think there are some high profile um, folks emerging and we'll see more of that as the culture of health and as people who are in um, entertainment or sports, for example, um, are able to share their stories about what it means to personally be affected by type 2 diabetes or hypertension or lose someone like many of us had too early from something that's totally preventable. So we see, we'll see more of that, I think. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for so your work. much, Senator Thank Martin. you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation. You're welcome. Uh, we're going to now move on to um, public comment. See no uh, interest for public comment. I'd like to thank all of the presenters for being here today to discuss the issue in obesity. Also to my colleagues who have been here at the hearing as well as asked questions. So with that, it includes the uh, business of the day. So we are adjourned. Thank you.